All right. So this is all the stuff that we're going to be using today. Hear the gentle hum of the refrigerator. I think I don't actually know if the GoPro can I, uh, can pick that up. Let me, let me just, uh, trying to keep my arms out of frame as I do this. Oh my God, this is actually a little bit more difficult than I thought. Okay. All right, and we're just gonna go ahead and wait for uh, a couple more people to get in. Meanwhile, let yeah, me make sure that I have all my stuff adjusted properly. Cool. Check out the bottle. I've already ruined it somewhat. I've already started scuffing it up. But. Of course, we have the Nano Boost Vitality uh, Energy Drink Mayo can. Still filled with stuff. I think I'm just gonna never open this because, you know, it's like it's already dented and scuffed because, I mean, like, well, you know, stuff we were doing with it. But I'm just gonna keep it around. So I'm not opening that on stream today, but. crack <laughs> so I can crack every single one of these joints and every single one of these so one two three four five six seven eight nine sometimes there uh, yeah so nine ten uh, yeah, so I have 20 different cracks I can do with each hand. <laughs> I know, wild, right? <clears throat> okay. Gonna wait for, I think, just like three more minutes, then I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Two, two or three more minutes. I guess I can be looking at uh, showing you guys the ingredients right now. So we got asparagus. This, this asparagus is um, this asparagus is definitely a lot thinner than the other ones. Um, if you guys have watched the video, then you'll know that peeling it is uh, one of the good ways. So with to especially when you got chunker boys like the ones in the videos, um, those are going to be the ones that you definitely want to peel to preserve as much as possible. I think these really thin asparagus ones, you can definitely get away with uh, breaking them, but you know, I'm probably gonna peel them anyway. Um, I still think that even with something as small as this, uh, peeling it still retains the most amount of uh, asparagus per buck. So I don't think I, uh, I might peel all of this. Maybe. Oh, you know, yeah. 
But uh, to start with though, what we're gonna... So the itinerary for today is we are going to have... You know, next time I should have like a little board or something. I actually do have a tiny whiteboard. I should bring that up next time. But for today, what we're gonna be doing is we will be doing the fanciest yuzu shoyu ramen you've ever seen. We're gonna be doing it with asparagus a la girl dm. We're gonna be doing it with uh, tofu that is going to be fried in mayo. And we're gonna be making our very own mayo as well with truffles, white truffles, white truffle oil. Cause I, uh, have you seen white truffle prices recently? Like, you know, just like one of those things is like $2,000 or something like that. So I'm not gonna do that, but we do have the oil. So <clears throat> peeler. Yeah, white, yeah, just like, um, white, like a, a single, like, white truffle about that big, it's, it's incredibly expensive. It, they're just, they're just really rare, and, uh, demand for them is just going higher and higher, and I think we have, like, fewer, we have fewer people going to hunt for them and look for them, and there's, like, a shortage, so you have higher demand and lower supply, um, uh, not only from, you know, all the stuff with COVID with, and inflation and everything, but just, uh, Currently, white truffles are more or less something that can only be found in the wild. Um, cultivation of white truffles is not really as good as it could be. Um, so I think there are some places that do do cultivation of white truffles, but they're they're still trying to scale up and everything, and demand is growing way higher. So all the wild ones have basically been um, uh, picked out at this point. So it's really it's harder and harder to find them. Anyway. That's also why, like, it, that's why also, like, if you go to a restaurant and they're like, ah, yes, do you want white truffles shaved over your pasta or whatever? Um, always ask for the price because just shaving some of the white truffles is just like, it's like 60 bucks. It's insane. Yeah, tr so tr truffle farming can take years and often when the truffles aren't, uh, and when the truffles are, um, at the right size, they might not be the right, they might have like a kind of a funk or a musk or like an off flavor to them. Um, like really good white truffles do take a lot of skill to grow. Um, one of the interesting facts about truffles is that truffles used to be something that was eaten very widely and truffle cultivation and farming was something that was very well known. However, in World War I, um, France lost so many men to the trenches and the battles of World War One, and then subsequently uh, World War Two, that the uh, the knowledge for cultivation and growing and farming of truffles was lost. Not only that, but a lot of the um, the fields and lands that were particularly good for truffle cultivation were um, well shelled by artillery and had all the warfare and 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 you know the mustard gas and all the stuff that they had in World War I that made the fields no longer very good for cultivation. So that's one of the reasons why cold, uh, truffles are so rare and so expensive and hard to find now. Fun little uh, history fact for all everyone here. Okay, now, um, cool. I said I was started, yeah. Okay, I need to turn to Do Not Disturb, apparently, because I'm getting a lot of spam phone calls. Hooray. That's good. Yeah, so funnily, fun thing about the phosphorus is that phosphorus is actually really good for plants, and uh, plant, I'm not sure about mushrooms, actually, but um, uh, you, you'll you find that uh, shell, like, shell craters from artillery tend to have huge amounts of uh, plant growth around the circles. So it, um, that's something that is, um, that's something that we're getting a lot of photos and videos of in, uh, Ukraine right now, actually. Someone was talking about the, you know, sunflowers and stuff growing from there. Anyway, we're going to go and get started. Um, so the, on the itinerary today, we are going to be making the 
We're going to be making uh, our own mayo from scratch, and I'm going to be basically one of the things I do very much want to show is what goes into mayo. Everyone's like, I think everyone's constantly disgusted by mayo, and um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to stand up for mayo over here. I'm going to fight for mayo and people who love mayo and girl DM's obsession with mayo by showing you guys that mayo is very normal. You just you learn how to make it. You see what goes in it. Mayo's mayo's fine. It's mayo is oil and eggs. Um, the difference between and then also if you ever had aioli, um, aioli is a distinct preparation by itself, um, technically speaking. But nowadays the term is basically just interchangeable with mayo. Um, yeah. So we're gonna so we're gonna start out by making our own mayo and we're gonna make it super fancy because. Uh, we're going to be making a super fancy use to show you just to, you know, funsies. Uh, I flex my culinary things a little bit. Um, but we're going to be making it with uh, champagne vinegar, white truffle oil, and eggs. I wish I could say something fancy about these eggs, but they're just, they're, they're just eggs. Um, my mom actually has chickens. And... It's going to be winter and it's cold, so they're not really laying eggs right now. So otherwise, I'd be using those eggs. Those eggs have like, <laughs> okay, so not not to toot my own horn, but this is my stream and my company, so I'm allowed to do it. But uh, we feed those chickens white ramen scraps because like there's a lot of crumbs and, and and stuff, and we just like gather like bags and bags and bags fulls of them and feed them to the uh, chickens. And because they have so many nutrients in them, and because they're like you know high protein and everything, the eggs that come out of those chickens are just like ridiculously rich and filled with umami. And like the the yolk has like this uh this really great um orange color to it and like this creaminess and everything. Um, you know. So uh. I guess white ramen is good if you uh, have chickens as well. But anyway, I'm gonna get started making the mayo. So first, mayo, uh, let's go over a little bit of science. Mayo is essentially an emulsion of uh, egg and oil. What that means is that in terms of actually making, uh, it, what that means is that your standard mayo over here, well, this is actually QB, but um, you know, Japanese mayo is just realistically a slightly different mayo with MSG in it. Um, it is, um, it is essentially, it's, it's just egg, which has, which inside egg yolk has a compound called lecithin that is an emulsifier and uh, will uh, basically bind oil and water together. Normally, water, oil, don't mix. However, eggs lecithin is, acts, uh, will make them like each other. Um, so this, you know, uh, hydrophobic and, um, oh, I, got, I forgot the... Hydro, uh, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, you know, it, it makes it all work together. Um, the great thing about making mayo and making uh, anything like this is that you don't really have too much, uh, you don't really have to have too much in terms of recipes here because, uh, and, and one of the things I do want to mention about recipes, one of the things I do dislike about recipes is that this egg right here is going to be a slightly different weight and quantity than, um, than another egg. And similarly, the, the amount of fat in there and everything is going to be uh, variable. If you try to go super, super exact on recipes, then simply it's you're just not going to have the um, the right results. Instead of recipe should be seen as a, this is, um, this is how uh, I've made it in the past, utilizing roughly around these ingredients, and it has worked out. You should be adjusting also touching raw eggs, so washing hands. Uh, if you tune into the last beef portion yon stream, you'll realize that I wash my hands a lot. I will be washing my hands quite a bit because I hate the feeling of stuff on my hands. Um, ooh, also, it's cold, so I have penguin socks on. And yes, new 14, it does act like a binder for water and oil. Uh, notably, I will be looking up, uh, so I do actually have chat on right now, but I need to put it in a place that's out of the way so I don't like knock into it and get water all on it and everything. So, um, the, uh, so looking 
at chat every so often. I will not be able to like look up and down all that much. Yeah, um, the, the, but considering looking at the, uh, the chicken eggs and all that kind of stuff is uh, calcium and, and uh, minerals and all that kind of stuff do increase uh, like egg strength and all that kind of stuff. And by ramen, the naked nudes. I've knocked everything over, it's ruined. And if you look, we do, uh, like, even in Naked Nudes, we got, we got potassium, we got thiamine, we got riboflavin, we got uh, a good amount of iron, we have 22%, in fact. Um, so, you know, it's good for the chickens. Good. Uh, you know what? That's, that's fine. That's fine. We'll deal with it later. Bad job. All right, so. Um, so what we're going to be making is, um, if you want our super, super creamy mayo and... Um, the, the very traditional way of making it is you want just the egg uh, yolk, but we're going to be making whole egg mayo today because I don't like separating eggs. I don't like having to do special things just for it. Um, this specific one, uh, you know what? How truffly do we want it? I'm also going to add a bit of salt. That's going to improve the flavor. And we're going to add MSG as well because MSG is the king of flavor. So we'll just beat that up a little bit. And um, so the, the important thing about this, and I'm gonna be doing it manually, right? I'm gonna be doing it manually because it's fun to watch and you get to see me suffer. Um, and that's always fun for people to watch. But one of the big things that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're breaking up the uh, the yolk and whites and really getting it in there. Um, otherwise it just won't emulsify as well. Um, I actually do have less of thin around here as well that I can throw in in order to make things bind a little bit better as well. But um, yeah, cause uh, I could just make this with purely white truffle oil, but also I don't want to use up all my white truffle oil. So um, because, oh man, I wish you guys could smell that right now. Oh, that's, that's, that is truffly. That is really nice. Uh, but the nice thing about um, making a mayo from scratch like this is that if you want a more neutral kind of uh, flavor to it to uh, for your mayo, then you can use you know you can use your uh, canola oil and and things like that. But if you want like a more distinct flavor, and uh, what we're going to be doing here in order to kind of have uh, a little bit of um, additional flavor in multiple different um, aspects is to utilize both truffle oil here, which is an olive oil uh, that has been infused with um, uh, white truffles. So notably, something else I wanna point out is that a lot of white truffle oil, like uh, the brand Urbani, I think it's called Urbani, it's, it's something like that. It's like a, it's like a, a white and red label, um, most commonly used everywhere. That is the one that is most commonly used for things like uh, if you go to any restaurant or you go to anywhere that has truffle fries or anything like that, that's what they're gonna be using that is actually, uh, that's like a, a imitation vanilla extract where they actually have synthesized the key uh, flavor compound of white truffle and, and put it into that oil. Um, they also have some slivers of real uh, white truffle in there as well, but the primary flavor is the, uh, the synthesized uh, flavor. There's no problem with that. That is great. That makes, it, that makes this wonderful flavor very accessible to people. However, um, if you get... If, so if you get something like this, which is one that has been infused with actual white truffle, it's it's really, really expensive. And if you put it into something like this, or you put it over fries, you're really not gonna be able to taste the difference at all. So if you're cost conscious and you still want to be looking at um, truffle oil or anything like that, definitely buy the ones that have the, um, the, uh, the main flavor compound in. Same with vanilla extract, actually. Vanillin, the, uh, the compound that makes the mass majority of vanilla flavor that is like, you know, 90% of vanilla flavor is in imitation vanilla extract is a synthesized compound made by science that allows vanilla to be very highly accessible to everyone everywhere. And all, and, and then you'll have people going, oh, you need to get the real stuff and all that sort of stuff. That's really expensive. And if you're putting it in cookies, if you're putting it into anything that needs baking, anything that requires heat involved, all the other compounds will be completely eliminated. So the only time when you should be using really expensive, um, uh, really expensive uh, extracts that use the actual ingredient in them, like um, like this, is when you're having when you're using it as a finish of some sort. So, for instance, um, 
uh, real vanilla extract uh, that has vanilla beans like soaked in uh, soaked in vodka because alcohol is the best um, uh, extractor for for this kind of stuff then you want uh, then you want to be using it in non-cooking preparations such as um, uh, such as uh, making ice creams for instance or uh, perhaps like a, a, a finish put uh, like finishing a sauce with it um, like a sweet sauce or something like that uh, yeah anyway ranting about that so with this what we're gonna do in order to make this is so I'm just gonna go and start with truffle oil but we put our salt in there which also helps break it up a little bit and now we drizzle it in we drizzle in our oil and just start really, really whisking. Now you have to be really, really good about your whisking over here because um, if you don't, then it won't emulsify properly and it'll break. Here we're going to be using a nice olive oil to start. So this mayo is going to be truffly. It's going to have... Um, a lot of the nice olive oil flavors. Uh, this is a really nice, actually, California. Um, I cannot pronounce that, but it's a ch ch chiqui ch chiquitita? Chiquitita? Yeah, we're gonna say that. Uh, chiquitita um, olive oil, and it has a really good, um, it has like that bright floralness. It has uh, good polyphenols, which means a little spice in the back. Um, and this is this isn't like the this isn't like the kind of like really really subtle stuff that you would like need that you would uh, need a lot of specialized training for, um, like uh, wines and things like that. This is like if you compare this against regular olive oil, you'd have this and be like, oh man, that is that is spicy. It is it hits in the back of the throat. Like you're you're really you're really feeling. It. Um, when you're looking for the right amount of oil, so obviously this looks nothing like mayo yet. Um, and, uh, for price sake, because I realized I should have only cracked one egg in there, although uh, I'm going to have a lot of mayo, is you can see already, you can see the bubbles forming, right? Um, I don't know about the lighting. Let me bring it over here a bit. You can already see the bubbles forming. So the white, those white bubbles, and if I... You see how if I move the bubbles, you can see the yellow beneath. Whoops, I dropped some on the floor. The white bubbles are... <coughs> ah, don't swallow your saliva. saliva. The white bubbles are essentially what makes mayo white. It's actually air that's inc being incorporated in there um, that lightens the color. So what we're going to do over here is I'm just going to use canola oil to, to fill it out. So I don't, <laughs> I don't use so much of this oops sorry about that so I don't use so much of this expensive olive oil so we're gonna very slowly just drizzle and keep going now you can be making this with a food processor and it will go much faster and probably a little bit more even but once again a little bit of suffering. Never hurt. Well, you probably hurt people. Yeah, suffering hurts. Actually, my arm is already very tired. So generally speaking, what you... Oh, ooh, you can see already this is starting to thicken up. You can see when I'm drizzling it down, you can... Uh, there's definitely some thickness in there. The ribbons, as we say. Generally speaking, when you're when you're doing this, you know you're not whisking fast enough. Is if you can see the oil, if you can see like these little streaks of oil, you you, you should stop and let it incorporate in. So you whisk that in, right? And you see how there's no um, streaks of oil left. That's when you know it's uh, you should keep adding more. So even if I accidentally add like a bunch like that, it's fine. Just get it in there. You just don't add any more. And now you're good. Keep going. You can see already the color is lightening. Uh, I think if I do this, it'll be a little bit more. You can see the color is lightening up as we whip more and more air into it, as it becomes more and more emulsified. Mul 
So mayonnaise is actually one of the five mother sauces. Um, if you're very much into culinary stuff, then the mother sauces would be Espanol, vel Velouté, um, and this is the Escoffier, like classic French kind of stuff. Um, velouté, Escoff um, tomato, um, you know, um, bechamel, and um, and uh, actually mayonnaise. However, when you, ooh, yeah, look, I get distracted a lot, but you can see the ribbons forming on the surface here. Let's see, I think this light is a little stronger. You can see it's taking shape, it's getting thicker. As you add more oil, it's just gonna get thicker and thicker and thicker. And that's, you can just, and then, so if you wanted a thinner mayonnaise or more like a hollandaise type sauce, this is what you would use. Um, but doing a bit more. Um, so whisking, so whisking side to side, right? This incorporates more air. This technique right here, so um, the, the best technique for incorporating air quickly is actually a figure eight. So this, create while spinning the bowl. Like if I wanted to whip cream, this is the technique I would use. However, with, uh, however, with something like mayo, where the main thing that you wanna be doing is not only incorporating air, but making sure that there is proper emulsification. Um, why I like to do this motion is one, it is much easier on my hand and wrist because I have to do it for a long time. And two, this makes it so that when I do this, it goes across everything. Whereas if I go here, you can see, so watch, if I'm doing this, right? Do you see how, once again, I'll take it over here. Do you see how there's still little bits of oil right there? One of the big things uh, about this technique is that you want to, and that's why I was talking about spinning the bowl. If you can't spin the bowl with one hand and drizzle, then you're gonna have little pockets like that and that causes it, that can very easily cause things to split. So that's why I prefer this technique. Whereas um, where a little bit of nuance about this, uh, this technique as well, is you'll see I go from small to wide and then I'll go back to small. That makes sure that everything is incorporated properly. Also, if you look, one of the nice things is if you do this, your book kind of spins a little bit. You can see I have a bunch on the outside. As you add more and more oil, you have to be a little bit more careful about it splitting because in because lecithin in the eggs is a limited ingredient, right? There's only a, uh, so much that uh, the lecithin can bind to. So as you um, as you add more and more oil, you do have to be a little bit more careful about making sure you're incorporating everything correctly. Let's add another big healthy glug of truffle just to. Ooh yeah, that is truffle. Ooh, that is nice. See, I can even go like this and just, <laughs> there's little, whole little cavitation there. That's fine. You just stick it in and you... See, we're pretty thick now, you know? It's like thick with like one C right now. Kind of want to go like Personally, I like a thicker mayo, so I'm gonna go thick with like two C's minimum, maybe three, <laughs> depending on how much oil I have left. And oh my god, I'm making so much of this. I need to give this away. So the people at the facility are gonna be able to get this. You can see this is really thickening up. A little bit more canola. I'm just like adding different oils right now just to. <laughs> See how thick it gets and how much I need to add. Whew! My arm's getting tired. Yeah. I need to give it away for, uh, for, cause like I make a lot of food and then like, I can't eat all of it myself. I mean, you, you're, you're seeing how much oil is in, right? I have two eggs in here and I put like 
a fourth of this giant bottle in already, plus all the oil that was in here. That's why my that's why mayo is uh is uh high calorie. It's um it is literally just you know what do you call it? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oh yeah, it's it just fat. It's just a bunch of fat. So it is literally just eating spoonfuls of aerated bound fats. So less than, like I said before, is, um, so at this point, um, it is fairly thick. Um, I don't want to, I, I don't want to finish quite yet because I want to add a little bit of acidity here. So vinegar does generally go into, um, mayo preparations. It is not required. Uh, it's not absolutely required, but having a little bit of that acidity is, um, generally preferred and generally what people uh, will be putting in there. Not absolutely required, and but we're gonna add a little bit. Once again, we don't wanna add too much at a time. And just make it a little fancier, we also have yuzu essence here. So we're gonna make this actually a, which also has a bit of acidity. So this is gonna be a yuzu truffle mayo. You can also be adding spices. So like if you wanna add paprika or dill, uh, garlic powder, things like that into this, um, then it's also delicious, but for now. And what we're making here is just gonna be a little simpler because we have so much flavor already from the really nice olive oil we're using, the truffle oil and other stuff, and the yuzu. So we don't, sometimes overcomplicating things also reduces the amount of flavor because your tongue can only taste so much at a time. Yeah, you, you see that? You see that chunky? In terms of home, in terms of homemade mayo or like you know house made mayo, um, this is generally pretty good. I don't feel a particular need to like overdo it. Um, notably, some uh, notably, when you have this much uh, fat, then it occludes the taste buds, which is just a fancy way of saying that yeah, you actually do need quite a bit of salt to be able to taste any salt whatsoever. So. This looks like a lot of salt, and honestly, it is. Um, we're gonna add some more MSG as well. But uh, if you don't add this much, and we might even act actually need to add more, then <laughs> it'll just say, you, you just won't have all the flavors coming through. Salt activates our taste buds and allows us to taste more flavor. Um, so that is actually one of the big differences between something tasting seasoned uh, or, or having a good seasoning to it and actually tasting salty. Um, that is one of the differences between uh, season, uh, finishing salt and um, and like finishing salts, table salts, why there are so many different forms. They sit on the tongue differently and will give a sensation of saltiness or that it's seasoned. I think because I have egg white in here, if I just keep whipping, it'll just get thicker too. Which, if you've ever heard the whole thing about like, oh, you know, you won't, you won't get a good meringue if you have any bit of egg yolk or whatever in it, then it's it's not true. It's fine. I don't know where that live sale comes from. I wonder how thick we can get this just by whipping. But then it'd be a whipping stream, and I don't I don't know I don't know if you guys want to see me sit here whipping things for forty minutes. Unless. Actually, yeah, you can already see it getting thicker as I work more air into it. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Remember, always taste for flavor. Oh, that's good. Actually, I am going to add a little bit more oil, oil into it, I think. I'm going to go a little bit more oil. Not really getting much vinegar in here. A little bit more acidity. Dash more yuzu. I don't want it to be like super, super yuzu. I just want like a little bit. I may as well use the rest of this oil, right? Like, there's not that much left. A bit more truffle oil too. I don't think it's coming through quite as much as I'd like it to. 
can see it's taking longer to incorporate in. Especially at the edges over there. Does the temperature of the ingredients affect the consistency? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, you, you definitely want this to be cold uh, when you're doing it. If it's warm, you're gonna have, it's not, a, it's not impossible. And that's actually how Hollandaise is done um, with a double boiler. But the colder it is, the easier it is to incorpor incorporate things. And because the thicker it is, um, uh, as I'm sure um, uh, you guys have seen, like, you know, if you put stew or something in the fridge and it gets cold, it, it thickens up. Versus if something is hot, it loosens, uh, it loosens up. So the more you have, uh, the colder it is, the easier it is to work with. Anthony Bourdain said that truffle oil is a sign of insecure chef. Yeah, I think uh, I think truffle. Um, well, I think he I think he was uh, talking about basically using truffle oil as a sign of status and a sign of um, and to kind of what's the word for it make up for a lack of um, a lack of skill. Um, but there is something to be said about perception as well. The reason why two and three Michelin star restaurants will still offer truffle shaving and truffle oil and truffle things is because they're even, even for the best chefs across the world, the perception of elegance, the perception of fanciness, the perception of high class and the association of what truffle oil is, what white truffle is and the price point and everything like that carries prestige with it. In the end, truffle is just an ingredient, right? Whether or not we see it as prestigious or as something that is uh, easily accessible as a rich person's food or per poor person's food, all depends on the culture, all depends on the time, all depends on, generally speaking, just how people feel about it. You know, lobster, for instance, used to be a poor person food, and now it's like 15 bucks a tail. Same with oysters. Truffle, um, and I, I was talking about this earlier, but truffle actually did, um, truffle did actually used to be a very common food in France. Um, before World War Two, or World War One and Two. All right, that should be incorporated in, and you can see it's nice and thick. We can actually go and open this up, uh, open up a pre-made one, and see the difference. <sighs> if I can actually manage to open it. Oh, so that's what the arrows mean. Neat. How about that? I'm very clever. I'm honestly a genius. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. For that's the thing. Truffle oil and truffle can be an incredible accent to things, but it's kind of like perfume, right? It has a very strong scent. It's about how you utilize it, how you blend ingredients with it and how you um, incorporate it into anything else. So one of the big things I will point out about truffle oil is that you have multiple camps. Number one, you have the people who are like, oh my God, truffle oil is like the top tier of everything. And the more truffle oil, the better. The, that will make you that, you know, that just tastes better because the once again, sign of prestige and perception. Number two is, um, number two is, Oh my God, anyone who uses truffle oil is, is terrible. Oh my God, truffle oil is awful. It, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. No, truffle is just an ingredient, just like everything else. Let's stop gatekeeping on both sides. Treat everything as an ingredient to use when it has 
a good use for it. Don't overdo it, moderation, balance your flavors, bridge those flavors, and everything works. Which is why we're doing this right now, with mayo. Anyway, let's taste this. Yeah, that's good. So we can actually see the difference. Um, so you can actually see this is significantly more yellow than this because, you know, I think this one also has thickeners in it. Oh yeah, the, the point here I was going to do, you know, was, let's drop some on here and we can see them side by side. bring to where we have a little bit more light. You can see that I can continue uh, doing uh, doing this, but they have roughly the same consistency. I think there's definitely some kind of uh, thickener in here that makes it hold the shape a little bit better, but specifically because we're not concerned about the utilitarian usage of the mayo I made, and we're just, we're gonna be using this uh, mayo for um, seasoning uh, the yuzu for making our Nano Boost Vitality uh, sparkling drink, you know, gotta stay hydrated, then this is a perfectly good consistency. One of the good tests that you can do is if you go like that, does it hold its shape even when you're, um, even when it, you know, should be falling? If so, you know, you got a good consistency. Actually, usually we would do it on the back of the spoon, but you know, whatever. I'll just eat this. Yummy. Okay, and that, and that right there is how you make truffle mayo. Or I guess if I add a little bit of garlic to it, you could call it an aioli, but uh, oh, what was it? To find moderation when you eat half the quart of ice cream instead of the whole thing. Yeah, I do have a lot of mayo here. You're right, I should eat some of it. One sec, let me see if I can get this. If I can move this. Well, let me see if this dumb method works. You can just... Yeah, it's a little upside down. Yummy. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I do swallow. Doing that kind of stuff and not and spitting it out. No commitment to the bit. Mm. Truffly. <laughs> oh wait, I, I should clean the camera. Yeah, this is just oiling the camera. This is maintenance with mayo. Mayo, because it's oil-based, has a lot of um, good properties to it that allow it to be used somewhat as a cleaning um, supply as well. So, you know. Eh. Eh. Nice coffee, man. Why wouldn't you? Because the raw acid kills the germ. Um, there's not actually there. So, uh, in order for there there to be enough acid to really stop microbial growth and all that kind of stuff, this would need to be significantly um, higher in acid. This it would be like, you know, you you'd have to go really really um, acidic. Uh, you could add pure acetic acid to get that effect without like making it too thick. But there's all stuff that you can buy on Amazon too. So. And yeah, we, we are using raw. So yeah, th this is made with rag. Oh no, it's I got mayo on my sword. One sec. <laughs> it's got this. I, I, think, I think I just have to be okay with mayo getting everywhere today. That's just gonna happen. Oh no, look at, oh my God. 
Yo, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like actually... Ayo? Ayo mayo? Look at that. Do you see the difference? Like, the the sword... Do, do you see that? How shiny it is? Ooh. Maybe, maybe I'll polish... Maybe I'll polish the sword with mayo. You know, the, the scabbard? The sheath? Let me just, uh... Let me try that again. You know, just... Just a little thin... Thin video. Oh my god, that I, oh my god, that works really well. <laughs> look at that though! Doesn't the wood look nice? Oh. Ooh. And now if you if you smell it, you guys can't smell it, but I can. Ah, it has a light scented. Hello, mailman. Now if you smell this. All right, I'm gonna wait for him to be on. Cool. Now, if you smell it, you get the nice scent of yuzu and truffle. Oh, don't you worry. It'll be fine. It's it's fine. Daijoubu. So yeah, that's how you make mayo. What was I gonna do next? This is why I make a list. I don't... I just added egg to an oil rub. You are correct. And that's the thing I want to point out when everyone's like, Bah, mayo, it's disgusting. I don't like mayo. Mayo is, oh, gross. It's eggs and oil and sometimes vinegar, salt and spices. That's it. That's why we're going to cook with it and deep fry with it because it's oil. Um, uh, okay, anyway, next thing, what was the next thing, uh, uh, Rory, Arya, Mods, uh, what was the next thing on my list again? I was gonna do something else before I made, <gasps> the Vitality, all right, now, you know, all, all the, <sighs> see, all this whisking, all of this work with the arm, oh, you know, when you when you're when you're doing so much physical activity, you gotta stay hydrated. So let's make a tasty drink. And it was vitality. Well, okay, this is the pre-made stuff. This is actually watermelon kiwi that I'm having over here. Uh, it's delicious. Uh, shameless plug. Go to our kick. Uh, go to Kickstarter.com slash Tim J Zhang slash Nanaboost. For uh, to to support our Kickstarter and boost vitality, this has L-theanine, has L-tyrosine. L-theanine helps with jitters, anxiety, and all that kind of stuff, um, and also helps with uh, perception of the stress, which is what also L-tyrosine does. And L-tyrosine specifically also helps a little bit with wakeful, uh, with feeling not as brain foggy if you haven't had enough sleep. Now, I will say these are minor effects; they will not cure anything, but I will take every edge that I can get when I'm working these kind of hours. Also, tastes delicious, has all of your vitamins and minerals, um, uh, including potassium, and has fiber. Because if you're like me, I suck at eating fiber, and I want good poops in the morning. Don't fight wars on your toilet. Drink Vitality. We're gonna use this version. I'm just gonna throw a scoop in there. Now pro tip, this is uh, generally a good tip for any kind of drink mix that you do. Oh wow, you can you can just kind of see the light, the god rays just coming in, whoosh, cutting across. Look at that, look at that, whoosh, these cool effects. It is also making like the resolution and stuff kind of weird, but you know. Uh, this is, so I'm just, but uh, the, where was I? Oh yeah, um, one of the things, oh my God, I have lids everywhere. What lid belongs to what? Oh, I figured it out. The color coded, just what I need. Yeah. So for to, if you've ever had clumps and stuff in your drinks or your sauces or anything like that, pro tip, make a concentrate first. 
What I mean by that is add a little bit of water to start with, or in this case, we're making Nanus Boost Vitality Mayo Edition. Thank you, girl DM. So we're gonna add our truffle mayo in here. We don't need dehydrated mayo. We have the fresh, primo, luxurious shit here. You know, there's probably, I, I could get a spoon. I, I should get a spoon, but we're gonna drizzle it in instead. Is that a good amount? Yeah. And of course, we need, now, you can just add water here, but we want to make it fancy. We want to make it nice. We want to make it, you know, mwah, just uh, elevate things. Treat ourselves a little bit. It's been a tough few years. Let's live a little bit. Let's make it sparkling. And by that, I mean, let's add some gold leaf. Have you ever had gold leaf in your nutritional drink? <laughs> I didn't think so. Let's rim the glass with it. Just, just a little bit of rimming. Uh, mm. It's not sticking. It's not sticking to the rim. There we go. Just, you know, just just apply a little bit right there. It's just a little, a little extra. Just a little, a, little, a little something special. And yes, this, this is actual gold. This is 24 karat gold leaf. Oh man, I should have I should have gotten like the actual flakes. This is actually harder to tear up than I thought. I think this is meant for like layering onto things. <laughs> there we go. It's it it's it's working. It's it, it, <laughs> I should have like you know those like tequila things where you just like have a salt rim. I should I just gotten one of those and just filled it with gold. And you know why we're doing it sparkling like this? Cause because because oh my god I'm losing my tra train of thought. Cause cause girl DM is is like a gold sparkling joy of chaos. <laughs> It stop sticking to my fingers. Ta-da. Yeah, you're right. We should add more gold leaf. I don't think anyone actually said that, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to we're gonna try to make this a little bit more sparkly by kind of there we go. Perfect, beautiful. This will be so good for my diet. Uh you know, you got your vitamin A your vitamin vitamin c your vitamin b your vitamin gold minerals mm, is definitely healthy now we get our water And one more. Oh, I hope I didn't do too much. We'll see. Ah, perfect. There we go. Spicy water. So like I was saying before, the trick is just add a little to begin with. Make a concentrate and a little bit of like a slurry. Beautiful. 
Everything incorporated. Look at that perfect pour, right on top. Mm. See that? It's mixed in beautifully. Yummy. Mmm. Ah, delicious. And golden. Hi, Maggie. Bye, Maggie. She wants no part in this. Understandable. Have a nice day. I actually have this much gold leaf left. I have a whole other pack, actually. So let's put gold on everything. Oh, yeah, no, you're you're right. I did spill some. That is that is a crime. I I should I should remedy that. I should definitely. Waste good stuff like that, right? There's just, there's gold all over the place. <clears throat> all right, let's get cooking. We'll go ahead and set this aside. I need a little bit more room, so we'll bring that off to the side. We'll bring the. <clears throat> That's fine. I have a small kitchen, but this is still actually larger than how much space I had to cook with when I was working in a Michelin star restaurant. <sighs> the other restaurants like I just I had no room to work with whatsoever <laughs> okay uh yeah get the eggs too right I don't need those. so to start we're gonna do before we make the ramen itself we make the toppings we're gonna make the other stuff that goes in now We'll go and start with actually the green onion because that's going to need a little bit of time. I actually have one in the fridge already, just in case. Um, we need to cut the green onions, so bring out your uh, blade of choice. Now, the big thing about cutting some good green onions for something like this is that you can cut it straight across, right? So you can do something like this. Uh, let me try this angled right. Right, you can, you can cut it straight across like this, or if you wanna be fancy about it, and today we're all about being fancy. We're about respecting the luxury. You do it at an angle, see? Like this, you just do a really, really deep bias cut. Hang on, I need more room. I'm gonna cut the asparagus at this point. Do a deep bias cut. And this will actually give you some really beautiful looking strands of slivers of, um, of green onion, a scallion, that will give you some really, really nice looking presentation later on. So you just wanna kinda do it like that. And you can see that looks hell of a lot cooler than this. But wait, that's not all. Let's make it even cooler. Literally. Where'd I put it? Oh God, where did I put it? Uh, oh, here it is. You can see these are ones I've done earlier. If you put it in the fridge, right? 
with some ice and start to curl up and you get these really beautiful looking green onions and this is going to look really really nice and really really fancy once we put it onto the ramen for now we're just gonna put it away and next time i next time i go to grab this i will definitely not be able to find it again but you know that's fine don't worry about it Make sure that you clean. Because we have those prepared, I'm not gonna bother with the rest of these. So we'll set them aside for now. I don't have a plate for this, do I? You know what, that's, that's fine, we'll put it on there. That's fine, that's fine. Touch it. That's no problem. And we'll just wipe it again with the dirty dish rag that Gary hates so much. <laughs> yeah, so uh, kitchen sores are uh, coming to vogue. Get on board while you can. Someone pulls out a small eight inch knife <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, you only have an eight incher? You think it's an eight inch big boy? No. I got this. This isn't even the biggest one I have. I'll show you guys the biggest one I have later. Not today though. Do I need this? I will need this later. Eh, we'll save it here for now. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the asparagus. So. Um, if you've watched the YouTube video about how to do this properly, which you should, go watch the video. Oh yeah, um, let's do a drop. Uh, so for the next five minutes, if you go to a link that will be posted in chat, you can get user show you earlier than everyone else along with, um, along with special items like a giant holographic sticker uh, that was custom drawn and made by, uh, um, by, um, com comfort and oh my god what is his tag what is twitter now uh his twitter is not safe for work so be careful about that but made but drawn by him for girl dm and will be a giant holographic sticker like that big i have one of them around here i'm too lazy to go find it so get that and uh so yeah go on the link get the thing earlier and uh, uh, and you'll get it earlier than everyone else, and you'll also get the special limited edition stuff. So, meanwhile, while we get into asparagus and how to do asparagus, so you so with these, you can just split them off like this. But once again, that's quite a bit of waste, so I don't like to waste that much. So we're gonna peel it. Um, these luckily are pretty pretty thin, so we don't really need to peel that much or cut that much. They're also really really. They're not very hard. I need to... So they're a little bit more difficult to peel. But we'll make it work. Also, my peeler is just not very sharp anymore. I should get a new one at some point. Wow, in fact, it is peeling so sharp that it is actually just destroying the ends. That's okay. That's Daijobu. That you can see this is still more than that. So that's fine, I think. Ish. We're only a little scuffed here. Just a little bit. It's probably gonna put too much down down pressure. <laughs> oh my god, these are really fragile. Whew! You put these in a Valorant game and they would like DC right away. After they they'd be like the kind of people who are in your games and uh, decide to give up after losing the pistol round. Start flaming everyone, throwing and saying you're the worst teammates in the world. That's what these asparagus are like. That's why we're gonna burn them. In mayo. I'm not condoning any violence. I'm saying I'm cooking asparagus. You know, just, just for clarity. Wow. 
wow, yeah, this is... <laughs> Damn. I chose some bad asparagus. I should have looked. I should have looked more before I grab them. This is that. That'll work. That's. I'm. I'm genuinely considering this. The. The. Uh, snapping method at this point. Just because. All right. So. So the. I did watch that, and the the sheesh approved uh, peelers are still not as good as this brand over here. I am not paid to say anything but this is the Kuhn Recon Switzerland ones. These are the ones that we used um, at the Michelin star restaurant I worked at and other fine dining places, uh, Pebble Beach. No, Pebble Beach didn't. Pebble Beach didn't, well, okay, those of us who bought our own equipment brought these, but Pebble Beach had like the really crappy, like, what do you call it, ones? Ah! I'm just, these are just breaking on me another peeler around here somewhere that maybe I don't know <laughs> yeah I'm just gonna snap them okay since they're snapping on me anyway set use the sword for efficiency you know what you know what you're right you're absolutely right thank you chat why am I waste why am I wasting this much time absolutely correct hello Maggie yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I know my fingers smell like asparagus. You, you don't like that, do you? Ah, <laughs> uh, she hates it. <clears throat> All right, drop timer starts now. Go get, go get your uh, your girl DM Yuzu. Get it early. Get the nice stuff. We'll just we'll just do a you know pretty jack. It's always hard to figure out like exactly where my camera is pointing. I think I gotta lean down a bit more. Ta da! Hehe. <laughs> So that'll be ready. <clears throat> she, I don't know if you guys can catch glimpses of her, but she keeps peeking in and then just like not coming in. Oh, I think she thinks it's dinner time. Kind of is, but you know, cool. All right, so the fan is gonna turn on, so the audio is gonna be a little bit, well, I don't know if I need the fan for this, actually, now I'm thinking about it. Sun is going down, though. a bit more so this is turned on now what have we learned about what mayo is mayo is an emulsion of egg and oil therefore Is the same as oiling your pan. There's always a quiz. There is always a quiz, Rory. Got a little smoke coming out. It's fine. That's the bottom. I think I accidentally put something under there when it's uh, was cleaning. Anyway, we throw the mayo down over here, and what you'll see as it heats up is that it will actually start to melt. It's going to turn clear because the color once again is actually the uh arid um fats 
as it heats up, and this is pertinent to your uh, earlier question, um, Aria, but as it heats up, you'll see that it starts to get looser. It's not as thick anymore. And we can see, actually I probably should have used the one I made because I don't actually know what additional stuff they, well, that's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you, boo. It's fine. We'll make it work. We'll do a lot. So as you can see, if I stir it around and let it go, it'll melt. And simply turn into oil, because that's what it is. This is oil, egg, and vinegar. Now we can actually just go ahead and throw our asparagus in. And remember, okay, and remember to season with salt. That was MSG, but you know, salt. Salt, pepper, and MSG. The trifecta of deliciousness. You see how that's all, do you, do you see that? Look at that, look at that right there where you can see it's all oil and you're actually gonna see why mayo is actually um, mayo is actually extremely good for uh, something like this is that, well, one, asparagus is actually cooked or served with um, hollandaise, which is a mayonnaise sauce. Oh, I never told that story. Uh, the mother sauces, uh, people call it hollandaise sauce or um, bernays or whatever and mayonnaise you'll notice all have the same suffix. That's because mayonnaise was one of the original terms for the mother sauces, but nowadays, if you're teaching culinary school and you go, ah yes, the five mother sauces, espagnol, velouté, tomato, bechamel, and mayonnaise, people are like, what the fuck are you on about mayonnaise? And then they're not gonna take you seriously and then you lose all your students and then you keep them homeless and have to start streaming on you have to start streaming on Twitch to try and make a living, and then you become an esports star, and then you realize that saying mayo was one of the mother five mother sauces was actually the best mistake you've ever made. True story. Probably. Yeah, you see all those little bits over there? That's actually your egg. And they actually will caramelize to become like a really, really nice um, browning and uh, brown bits on your bottom. So we're just gonna kind of leave this like this to get a good mirrored reaction. To be perfectly honest, for the amount of, um, to be perfectly honest right now, looking at how much uh, uh, pan space I have, this is probably a little too much asparagus, but it's fine. Scrambled egg with terrible ratios, yes. Nice, beautiful browning. Um, so in the, in the video, I actually do blanch the asparagus to start with in order to uh, in order to help cook it through a little bit better and to get rid of some of the um, kind of like the off flavors that asparagus can sometimes have. Um, I'm not doing it with this one because one, that's a pain in the ass to set up and I don't feel like doing that. And two, these are really thin pieces of asparagus. So by the time I get browning on them, they're already gonna be cooked through. So. Is that better? Yeah. Kind of. Ish. I feel like that just makes it yellow without actually like making it more visible. Maybe one. Camera's not good enough. You can see this is getting uh, some good color already. Oh yeah, and the, these radishes, we're gonna, um, these radishes I really just brought for color because they're 
pretty. I wanted to get watermelon radish, but um, I didn't have any at the store, unfortunately. I think a lot of, uh, you know what I'm, uh, what I will do is I will do a little bit of sauteing with the radish afterwards because I think um, these leaves over here, most people will just throw away, but they're actually really, they're, they're really good. Like you can just saute them and same with carrot greens. Um, just cut them off, chop them up and saute them. They're delicious. See that? You see that browning? Mmm, that's the Maillard reaction. That's flavor right there. Color is flavor. <laughs> These are some soft boys right here. They're gonna be like overcooked by the time I get enough browning on them. Actually, fun fact by the way, if I were to do this without the mayo, um, I think they would actually become uh, overcooked before I get, got that much browning on them. Well, I mean, obviously I overcrowded the pan too, but because they have the mayo, we have all the browning from the mayo, so they actually get really good color, flavor, and mayo reaction even before, um, even uh, even as they, you know, overcook. You know, instead of using a plate, I'm just gonna dump them onto the cutting board. I wash things last, I gotta wash that thing anyway. So. That's pretty much ready to go. Yes, yes, I know. They are a little floppy, but they were floppy to begin with. We knew that. A floppy boy. Not gonna lie, um, last time I cooked with the uh, like the classic best foods mayo, I think that's a better mayo to cook with than the, the QP. Um, so we're not even gonna bother cooking these. I'm just gonna tear them. We're cutting them. With the oil, you can filter it. You can filter out the oil, um, and uh, you can filter out the oil to use for later. And keep using it. Or get, or like, like you can see how greens like this, especially. You know, if I'm gonna be cooking greens anyway, let me just throw some more in there. Since I have this whole thing anyway. Season this previously, so salt, pepper, and MSG normally, but I think we're pretty good to go on this seasoning wise. The mayo is salty too, so whatever. <laughs> Make more mayo with the cooked mayo? I mean, you could, you could try, yeah. Mayo exception. Because, like, I mean, re realistically, you're not even, like, um, if you were to do that, right, then you would just be introducing the cooked oil in there. It would just be exactly the same. Once you cool it down, um, it, it wouldn't have much of a difference because it, once again, the, the whiteness of the mayo is just the aeration. Mayoception. Infinite mayo. Infinite suki mayo. Sukiyo mayo. I tried. There's some Naruto. They're the Boruto's father references for you guys. Aha! Favorite. I actually want to pull for this one though. It's, that's probably a good idea. <clears throat> I create the. I will use the ultimate technique in the ultimate mayo to cast you into a realm of mayo dreams, dreams of mayo. Jiro dreams, dreams, of, dreams of mayo. Girl DM dreams of mayo, something. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, the bowls. Uh, so basically, one of the uh, one of the big things with um, how COVID worked and and everything is that um, these bowls we can't really bring over very easily and get made anymore. Um, the MOQs have gone up, uh, and they're just, we, we'd have to buy like 5,000 bowls. Like kick, Kickstarter was good because we could get like pre-orders for like, you know, the, um, the, the couple hundred bowl that were sold, um, in the very beginning. 
but now if we were to order, it's just like we could take pre-orders, but that would um, we still wouldn't reach the five thousand MOQ now. So we're just kind of looking at like the the problem of well, instead of just having like you know a couple hundred that we need to we need to buy in order to to get this made and have uh, some extra afterwards. <laughs> we need to be in the in, in the business of purely selling ceramic bowls in order to uh oh yeah sorry minimum minimum order quantity moq yeah ah! wow don't send that into the water that, that'd be bad i really need to find a better way to mount that it could be okay right now it's just like strapped under my chest mount and uh I'm calling it a day which is you know probably not optimal which is why it keeps falling but... So we have a greens, we have uh, our asparagus. Um, I could do a little bit of cutting of the radish for now, but you know, we'll wait on that. Cause next thing to do will be tofu. Specifically, mayo has a lot of flavor in and of itself, right? Because like we were talking about before, especially things like kewpie mayo, um, which is, you know, this that we're using. Let me swap over. Things like cubing mayo um, have MSG already presently in them, which means that we don't really need to add uh, too much additional uh, or anything like that. So if you're using mayo as a cooking tool in and of itself, uh, as your cooking cooking tool, cooking your, your um, uh, Oil, cooking vessel, oil, whatever you're, you're cooking your your oil, your fat, I guess. Then the um, then because it already has a seasoning, because it already has salt in it, it already has MSG. You don't really need to season too much. Uh, so like the greens over here, I didn't add really anything, and they're pretty well seasoned. Ow! I don't know why I said ow. I didn't actually hit my hand. So, to start with, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna deep fry may tofu and mayo, which means uh, panko. Now, y'all ready for this? This is gonna be this is gonna be a pretty interesting process. I do need the eggs, actually, now I think about it. You know what, I'll just, I'll just toss them in. That's fine, I'll deal with that later. Actually, yeah, before I do that, let me just, let me sure, just drop the double, double fisting method. Even though I only have three eggs. running out of space here. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So to deep fry, we're gonna do a dredge. We're gonna do a dredge process for this panko. That is to say, what we're gonna do is I will repurpose this plate as well. Ha! Less dishes, fewer. Someone's gonna yell at me for that. In which I don't like the grammar police. Stop it. Technically, technically, I'm gonna use the excuse. English is not my first language either. Ha ha. Uh, what was I doing? 
before I got distracted. Ah, yes. Far. Just get that everywhere. It's fine. A little bit of white powder never hurt anyone. It probably did. I mean, like, you know, flour can actually cause explosions. Fun fact. Don't keep flour around flammable things. We don't actually need that much. Um, so that's fine. I want to season our flour a little bit. Mix that around. Once again, we can season a bit more. I don't think it's strictly necessary for this. So, um, so we're just going to do it like this. We're going to do it live. Sword down here, make it a little bit safer. We're setting up our, uh, our breading station. I need one more bowl or plate or something. There we go. That's fine. Very prepared for this breading process beforehand. True. Not, not any material technically. Okay, well, I, I guess, okay, ground finely enough, I guess, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, like, rocks, something super inert, like, I don't know, like, neon, neon gas? I don't know, whatever. Let, let's, let's start a hyper-technical, dumb argument on what ground, how fine something has to be ground and what the technical definitions are. And they get really mad at each other when we disagree about this technical definition. That doesn't matter. That's always fun. Anyway, you're wrong and I'm right. All right. So. The tofu. Oh, man, it is going to be a little difficult to film this. While wow. Let me just make sure my angle's all right. Cool. If you could see me right now, I'm in a really weird posture to be able to film this and use a sword. Just gonna, you know, cut it over here. Try not to cut the plate, meanwhile. We're gonna chop it into some nice chunks so we can fry it in mayo. As you can see, the sword is the superior tool for something like this because if you use a regular knife, could it really go through tofu that easily? Yeah, didn't think so. Check me. Having a sword just laying open over here, you know, it's a little dangerous, but we like to live on the edge. Do what I say, not what I do. So first, in order to dredge, one of the things that you can do is you can do like a wet hand, dry hand method. Uh, basically, one hand only does the dry ingredients, one hand only does the wet ingredients. That way you don't actually um, end up battering your hands. But uh, I'm gonna batter my hands. I'm only gonna make one portion over here. Um, just so you're not, it's just so, you know, it doesn't take forever. I don't wanna fry that long. But so we go a little bit of flour first that helps things stick on and then we go egg and we go panko this will give us some nice delicious tofu cubes. If I wanted to really shill the yuzu shoyu a lot, one of the things you can actually do in order to season your flour a little bit more and to make this like really nice yuzu um, shoyu uh, tofu panko is to actually, um, remember what I was talking about with seasoning of flour? So you do like a bunch of your flour and you actually add the, some of the yuzu seasoning in here and then you get um, actually some really delicious yuzu tofu cubes.
and washing stream. <clears throat> okay, so to deep fry with mayo. Ah. <clears throat> ah. One, two. And then Open your mail. <sighs> Just like that. Very technical. And yes, this is definitely a uh, <clears throat> uh, Michelin star method. That is this 100%, you can trust my word because I worked at a Michelin star restaurant. I, I, I cooked at a Michelin star restaurant, therefore I everything I say about cooking and food is 100% correct. Oh yeah. Look at that. Globular, glob globular. Because it's thick, the uh, the heat won't transfer uh, through very well. So you know, stirring it to let it melt down is going to be probably your best bet. Honestly, the thickeners like in here, like you can feel there's like um, I don't know. I should probably look in the ingredients. Maybe it's not a thickener and they just have a really good way of stabilizing it or something. But you don't want to apply too much heat too fast. You can see that this is a little bit more dangerous when it is glopping at you because the steam trapped at the bottom that are trying to escape can shoot um, hot mayo into your face and burn you. You don't want that. That's that is bad i'm not i'm not a medical professional i'm not a doctor but i'm fairly certain if hot mayo gets into your face it constitutes a bad time So we're just stirring it to make sure that the steam can escape properly and it melts down without getting hot mayo in your face. You know, just normal things. I'm gonna start stirring with the other hand because like this hand is already not happy, you know, from the earlier stirring. Bubbling a little too much for my liking, so I'm gonna go and take it off the heat and slowly render down your mayonnaise until it becomes a clear liquid with browning at the bottom. Ooh. 
See, the big thing about this too is that because we're we're going to be trying to make it a frying oil, we do actually want to get rid of a lot of the moisture as well. So all the steam actually coming out is, is a good thing. Um, there is moisture in mayo, which is gonna be not the best for frying. So, you know. Ooh, you can see it just suddenly lost viscosity. Like very, very suddenly. You can see it's starting to split now. That's good. That's what we want. Unironically, I think by stirring it too much, I've, already, I, I've actually assisted in maintaining viscosity. Because, you know, once again, stirring less than all that kind of stuff. Once we get past a certain temperature, um, egg proteins begin to denature and congeal. That is at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit that you're really going to get um, congealing. I believe the process starts to thicken at about 150 to 160 degrees. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh, it smells a little vinegary. Man, this is this is actually taking longer than I expected. I think it's because the vinegar, the um, mayo to begin with was actually uh, a little cold, so we had to get add that cold range. Ooh, but here you go, it's starting to bubble. We're almost at that point where it's going to be completely melted down. You can see a lot of the steam escaping. That's good. It's no longer as viscous. That means um, it's not quite as dangerous anymore. Uh, we still want to be stirring and being very careful with it because it still can be a little splattery. So this nice little pot is going to be for our tofu. Look at that. Really a lot of the vinegar is boiling off as well. Acetic acid does denature in heat as well and it becomes less acidic and doesn't have as much um, of that, what do you call it? like that sourness. So this is gonna assist in that as well. You can see all the little individual bits and pieces in there are starting to also uh, really boil down and cook down. You can see where it now starts to look a lot more like oil and you can see it's actually starting to kind of fry its own components in there. That's good, that's beautiful. That's exactly what we want. Luckily I do have, luckily that is just about enough I am going to also turn on the fan so I don't smoke out the house with mayo. I, I wanna say I can leave it there, but also that might be dangerous. It's starting to get a little spicy <coughs> as it boils off. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that. It's golden. It's beautiful. It's mayo frying its own oil. It's mayo frying in its own oil. Um. So the, the egg that's congealing in here, re remember how I put a big, good old glop of mayo into the uh, asparagus and it like actually turned into crumbs? So this is what we're gonna be seeing over here as well. Even though you see a lot of it over, uh, even you, though you see a lot of it now, all of this is actually stuff that is basically not melted down yet. And yes, you can, you can put it over on. So once this runs a little clearer, um, and we're, we're, we're seeing that like it's starting to get to that browning stage. That's kind of what we want instead. Because once again, like when, when, because we're cooking off so much of this, it's, um, it's 
it's taking a while, but the um, but like the the mayo for the asparagus cooked down pretty quickly because we just didn't have that much. You you can see how it's starting to have less of that um, less of the stuff in there. It's becoming more and more golden, more and more. Um, oil like I'm guessing probably like two three more minutes this is gonna be ready and then we're gonna deep fry the tofu in it meanwhile let's heat up the water and make the ramen don't have one of these you should definitely get one this is like the best thing ever it helps you just you know make noodles or tea or coffee or anything like instantly and uh it's so nice you want like boiling water right away boom there we go there we go girl dm yuzu 3.0 let's check that in i'm gonna boil it for like you know two minutes three minutes three minutes ish so fun fact i actually oh yeah here we go here we go here we go so look at that see, oh, oh. see how we're starting to get that like browning you know some of the things still aren't quite as um oh man that is vinegary don't put your face over this uh you can see that there is significantly less of the uh the bits now so this is probably I just, um, and it's starting to like stick to the bottom a little bit, so it's probably ready. Start deep frying. So, all we gotta do is chuck our tofu in. And that'll start deep frying. Meanwhile, we can do a little bit cleaning, just a little bit. Now the big thing, the big thing about this here is that we don't need to cook the tofu through because obviously the tofu is pre-cooked. Um, so all we're all we're really looking to do with this right here is just to have uh, get a good color on the surface, get a little crispy. What was I looking for? Oh, I was getting chopsticks. looking uh, crispy. It's starting to get crispy. All right, meanwhile, while that cooks off both the noodles and the tofu, actually turn the heat down a little bit on the tofu and the noodles, that's gonna overboil otherwise. We're gonna cut some radishes, you know, just, just for color. So um, fun, fun fact about radishes it, uh, and how to present them is I had two chefs, one of them, which hated the tails over here and said they look like rat tails. And one of them said that they look beautiful and natural. Um, I think they look weird uh, and make it really hard to plate. So um, I get rid of them. I'm gonna agree with the first chef. Chef Anna. So, uh, Using a mando is one of the easiest ways to do it, but you can get some really nice slices just like this as well. And you really, you can get some really nice, um, so the trick I was talking about before, right? Oh, you can't see that very well. Let me see if I can get a better angle. 
Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. The trick I was talking about before, where you can just kind of like put things into a um, ice water, also works for fetishes. Ooh, that looks about ready, actually. Ooh, that's it on fire. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, let me do a better reveal. You guys couldn't actually see that very well. Oh, this is overflowing. That's kind of funny. Well, put it over the sink. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Cut it in time. Yeah, it's like all the way over a bit. Uh, plate. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Crispy. The nice thing is you get these other crispy bits too. The not nice thing is it's kind of hard to find. Is that it? Do I have just five? Just five? I think it's just five. Cool. I'll we'll let that cool down in the sink over there. Look at that. Beautiful mayo fried tofu. Deep fried mayo tofu. Hello fire, my old friend. I've come to extinguish you again. Yeah, who would have known that mayo, who, who would have thought that mayo can bring, do so many things. Look at all this that we've made with mayo. Oh right, I did. Because once again, stop hating on mayo. It's eggs and oil. It has so many applications. It does so much flavor. You'll just suck at cooking. Y'all don't understand food if you hate mayo. That's my stupid little hill and I'm willing to die on it. I'm low-key low key not gonna lie, right? Low-key, when I first found out that, like, good old DM was hell into mayo, I'm like, oh my god, someone who actually understands. Mayo is delicious. James, you have shit taste anyway. You don't like spicy food. You don't like cheese. You don't like, uh, flavor. You don't like rye whiskey. You... Actually, James is actually coming here later tonight, so he'll get to try some of this. And actually, I, I do have a I do have a rye whiskey. I think he'll like. All right. So, and also something I want to mention, right, is that when people are like, "Oh yeah, then you know this knife has this, this, it, it, these angles, or whatever," and it, like it doesn't it, it doesn't work as well. Um, you can't cut thin, you can't cut uh, thin slices or whatever. Look at this. Look at this. This is paper thin. You can, you can read. You can read through this. Can you, can you see that? You can, you can see that, right? Here, can you... There you go. You can read the word mayo through this. It's not the knife. You just suck at cutting. It's a skill issue. Most of these kind of things in the kitchen are skill issues. Get good. Stop blaming the other stuff. You just suck. Anyway, I think our ramen's ready. So, 
One of the things that, uh, one of the things about our ramen and actually most, ooh, ooh I found, I found another, I, I found another, I found another tofu. Hee 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 hee. Hoo 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 hoo. Ha 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 ha. Alright, and we're gonna leave that to the side. So uh, another thing about a ramen, and actually most ramen in general, is that you can actually get a cleaner flavor and a better flavor if you just um, rinse it or like dump out this water. You know how like pasta water is like starchy and also like, you know, not, not, not the best. Um, you can use it for sauces to help starch up things, but starch occludes flavor as well. Um, so if you want cleaner, better flavor, then just... Let's try it first. Especially with a cool ramen basket. You can also like do a quick little rinse. That also rinses off um, some of the starches. And in our case, because our ramen is made with quinoa, uh, some of the saponins, which can cause a little bit of bitterness if you're not used to it. Ta-da! Where's the ball I grabbed? Yeah. So. And then that's also what this beauty is for. You can then just add fresh hot water. Ta-da! Now. But the oil is still warm. True, the um... Uh, what do we call it? Uh, it's very cold here right now. I'm sure it's not cold for like you know all of you people who are in not California climates, but so this is actually one of the original packs, so it's caked up a little bit, but uh, you know it's, it's 2022. We like being caked up. I always like to do a little bit of a stirring around over there, get everything on the edges. And if you just kind of, this is my mixing technique, I always grab from the bottom and lift up. This ensures that everything is even. And then I do like this, go around again. The nice thing is by lifting it up and down like this, the noodles act as an edible whisk. Cause we're all about that whiskey business. And then if you want to get really fancy with it, you can like lift it up, fold it over on itself, do it again. And then get like that ramen shop kind of look. It's a little harder with um, curly noodles, but there we go. Something like that. And we're gonna start plating. Hey, look, remember how I said I was going to forget and then I remembered? Aren't you guys proud of me? With all the chaos in the background? It's fine. The aroma oil. So personally, so yeah, you can... Oh, yeah, also the oil. I've heard people complain about it. Here's the easiest way to do it without getting a mess. You just fold it and squeeze. Look at that. All of it comes out, no mess. If you want to get every last drop, you know, just a little shake in the water. I'll mix that up a little bit more. Oh, I should use white chopsticks just to, you know, branding. You, yeet! Do the uh, let's do that folding thing again. See if I can get it. All right, close enough. Good enough. So we're gonna go ahead and plate this. Pretty simple. Uh, so fun thing about plating is that 
what looks best on plating is when things are vertical and stacked up. Um, when you have things that are kind of like in piles or uh, shapes, it, look, it looks better. So also odd numbers. So for instance, for this, I'm gonna set it here. It's gonna stay out of the liquid, three here. And get a little bit of our greens, right? Place that right there. Also a little lump, and you can see I'm plating for verticality. And grab some of our aspergas, some of the nicer pieces, these limp little guys. Technically, I think this is uh, both Yuzu show you asparagus and all that kind of stuff are like spring. But we're gonna pretend spring, right? And we can just like set it there, and we can have fan out our I probably should have rinsed my hands before I did this but radish my fingers will cooperate which they are known to not cooperate often once again one two three four five a little bit color right there and um, yeah, I definitely should have washed my hands. It's fine. That's what paper towels are for. Wipe down what I've gotten dirty. You can just do a quick rim. Just a little, a little quick rim, you know? A little rimming. Quick cleaning of the rim. A rim job. Kind of do a good job of it. Demonetized. <laughs> and then we have the onion in the center. You can see once again, it's all—it's about that verticality, right? You can see how this—that because we have that shape we have that volume coming from this green onion it looks better than if we did it any other way and because we have that stack right because it's because we put it in the ice water it curls on itself and therefore it sticks and stays and stacks a lot better so i don't know where to put chopsticks i think like i think chopsticks actually out of frame is best but um see and we have a beautiful bowl of fancy yuzu, but we're not quite done yet. There are two ingredients left to put. Number one, gold leaf. Yeah, seriously, the sprinkles would have been so much easier. I have no idea how to easily I don't want I don't want chunks too big, you know? Like that that's too big. I want it to just kind of be floating all over. Just be free. See, nor normally you can use tools like uh, like tongs and tweezers and stuff. But I'm going to get my grubby little hands all over this because I'm going to eat it. You guys don't get to eat it. I don't have to be food safe. If I get myself sick, that's on me. But also, eh, it won't come off. Okay, actually, unironically, with the tweezers, probably would have been easier. Uh, but, you know. More gold leaf. Use chopsticks to peel. Yeah, that'd probably be smart. Let's see. Cause like the the problem is I don't want like I don't want like a whole gold leaf, right? I want I want like I want like chunks. And that's like I guess I could like tear off chunks here. Oh yeah, that works all right. Oh, 
my god. Plus. Cold lift plus. 24 carat gold leaf. The gold looks really nice on the uh, on the greens, actually. It's just, you know, just uh, something a little different. Something a little different, he says, putting 24 carat gold leaf on a bowl of ramen. Yeah, the problem is it keeps it keeps tearing. Like that. Come on. Come on. Oh my god. Please. Okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. Little by little. We're struggle busting. We're making it through. We're making it through, guys. We're all, we're almost there. Almost got it. It's almost that Jobu. Yeah, more gold leaf? Try him. Oh, wait, here. Here's some. Here's some. I can just throw it in there. Yeah, is that enough gold, guys? Is, uh, is that enough gold? What do you think? Yeah? But the real gold is the friends we made along the way. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. It's the mayo. It's the truffle mayo. Now let's see if we can get super fancy with it. Let's see if I can do like now or something. Nope, it's not gonna hold. Oh well. We're just gonna just gonna dollop this. Right? It's a little little dollop. Yeah. Little, little pile of golden mayo. Oh yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. That's the stuff. Mm. Oh yeah, we need some gold on top of that too. I'll take it from the drink. It's fine. Whew. Just a little, little, little flake. Little, little flake. Another right there. Mwah! Wipe off the rim a little bit. 